welcome to our tech talk so we had to take a two weeks break yeah <laughs> christmas. early christmas for us. early christmas for us. <laughs> uh so if you happen to miss us during the two weeks sorry about that uh so what's happening around we have two weeks to cover yeah so uh i think uh, something very cool is coming from microsoft yes uh they are going to build laptops with arm um, uh, processors in it they announced this last year right yeah yeah so it's happening now. Yeah. so uh this is basically a laptop with uh, phone internals in the so inside. let's go in i mean if you really want to go into the technical detail there has been uh so 10 years back there has been two players right yeah. in terms of processor market right mm-hmm. so there have been two separate architectures one is called uh, the cisco architecture and the risc right yeah. so uh then uh, intel is basically using the complex instruction sets right cisco architecture mm-hmm. which is normally people call it x86, x86. right yeah. so that's what uh, then there was apple where i've been using motorola and power pc processors yeah. which use risc architecture right mm-hmm. reduced instruction set computing so basically processors themselves has a language they speak right yeah. so based on that uh, those are the two major processor manufacturers ibm used to make risc processors and there are like few vendors and then intel was there right yeah. and then intel instruction set uh, which is x86 being done by used to do by ibm which is called cyrex mm. and then uh, you have amd so those are the two players right basically now it's amd and intel and then the rest of them right yeah so uh, arm was new back then right there yeah. were arm processors and they were specially designed for low power devices right mm-hmm. they were slow and not you cannot compare competed with uh, intel processors yeah. right so even apple they in 2006 they move out of risc instruction so basically they move out of power pc processors went to intel so now it's yeah. basically intel right so whatever computer you use either a mac or a windows computer it's basically even X86. a server it's a intel processor yeah and then arm was there but arm was more focused on uh, low power consumer grade mobile devices right yeah. so it's mobility right their whole thing is mobility mobility the problem the first problem the mobility is the power consumption right yeah. so they had to keep it low mm. i think even um, so now arm is catching up to intel right in yeah. terms of performance in certain ways Uh, it's not like you can take 1 gigahertz of a arm processor and 100% match it to the 1 gigahertz of a intel processor right yeah. sometimes the arm might be faster even though the clock speeds are lower right yeah. that that's due to the instruction set and how it works so phones if you have a phone is basically arm no yeah. question about it whether it's a apple iphone or a you know android phone hmm. uh, the arm is an open source processor right so yeah. arm architecture is open source basically it's 100% open source but it's it's freely available so you can license it anyone can make it mm-hmm. uh that's how apple do it as well so they take the arm course they arm own can uh, this arm a9 there are like different different models of arm processor versions right so what now intel uh, but windows has been always written to run on x86 yeah so the software and the kernel behind windows is basically designed to be run on intel based process yeah. nothing else i mean you can't run windows apps on a mobile you can't. Yeah. so it's the other way around as well. yeah. so what now when microsoft is trying to do is uh, change the uh, the core mm-hmm. core will run on the arm architecture yeah. which use reduce power consumption and all that then on top of that they will virtually run uh, x86 instruction applications right so it's similar to an em- emulator similar to an emulator but it will be much better than an emulator right yeah so good news and bad news mm-hmm. good news will be um, battery life right yeah so what they're promising is 25 hours of battery life which, which is i mean crazy battery life right correct so the bad news would be the compatibility issues right yeah uh, so so basically anything should work on the system right but should but uh, i mean if the software doesn't support i mean the soft if software is not supporting arm architecture then it will run on this emulator and it will be a bit slow i think what windows is trying to do is where they they were trying to do this way back when as well what what is it called windows c yeah so was it see they like and uh, ce or something yeah no not ce the recently they came up with something where they only have the uh, their app store only and then you can't install in other that's right 
Yes, right. The same thing. So basically, what they're trying to do is uh, Windows apps. So if you have an app in App Store, will work. Mm -hmm. That's sure. So the developer saw supporting ARM processors. Correct. Basically. So it basically will work. Yeah. But if you uh, download an application from another party who design it using a certain set of tools, mm -hmm. may or may not run. Right. So that's that's a caveat. But again, till in a, um, I mean, they recently showed uh, uh, one in, on one of these devices they are running uh, Photoshop. Correct. So I mean, it's not hundred percent super fast, but it works. So. I mean, come mm. on, if you want to run Photoshop, this is not what you're going to buy, right? Yeah. So this is for travelers who want great battery life, who wants to do their emails, who want to browse the internet, type their documents, yeah. that's it. And what's cool with this ARM uh, processors, calling? it's very easy to integrate uh, LTE and SIM support. Right? Correct. So basically, ARM is basically designed for mobile. Yeah. So basically, everything is there. Yeah. So you have your connectivity, your Wi-Fi, the battery saving technology, everything is built in. So you don't have to worry as much. Yeah. So that's there. So and this is, I mean, uh, using your phone and laptop at the same time, the tethering and uh, having the same inside your laptop, I mean, it's a winner, right? Uh, Correct. So it's easier to save your phone battery life and yeah. use it. But the only question I have is, uh, the Surface Books has been a failure. Will it be another failure on this? Because Microsoft is known to give up on their products, right? <laughs> they just, Windows Phone for example, they bought Nokia, yeah. they put Windows into it, they gave up on mm. that. The famous Zoom, they gave up on yeah. that. Recently they gave up on something else, I can't remember. So that's, so that's the question I have. So yeah. um, unless other hardware manufacturers adopt this, yeah. not I mean, on paper this looks pretty good. On paper, everything looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, with LTE also, I think you have around 20 hours of battery life. Correct. Uh, so but even if you take a new MacBook, it's about 10 hours, right? Yeah. So, yeah, another 10 hours. So, unless you have that, uh, unless you want to, I mean, I can understand 10 to 15 hours battery life is okay for someone who goes to work, they do their work, they come home, yeah. plug it in, right? That's, that's enough. Yeah. So, we had to take a small break. Um, after this break, we are having a special guest. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back. So uh, we have a special guest here with us today, Ramidu, Ramidu Deshapriya. Yeah. Uh, hello, welcome to the show. So uh, can you give us a little bit of intro about you? <clears throat> so I'm a senior consultant of technology at uh, Virtusa and part of the uh, game development special interest group there. Okay. Um, so at Virtusa we uh, get engaged in a bit of game development, a bit of gaming. So we have some uh, competitions that we have going on. Uh, yeah. So the gaming scene is, uh, I mean, it's expanding like very fast right now, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone is into this industry and also in the world even, it's very popular now. Mm -hmm. Esports thing is, mm -hmm. I mean, it's coming to a point that sports and esports is same, right? I mean, no difference there now. So how do you feel about the scene in Sri Lanka? So, um, yes, in Sri Lanka we have uh, quite a few eSports uh, competitions uh, mm -hmm. which are very popular. We get a lot of competitors in those. Yeah. So, Virtuosa also for the past four or five years, we've been hosting an eSports competition which is internal to Virtuosa. We've had people within the company compete against each other. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we've always had university students come in, uh, form their own teams and compete against each other as well. Uh, so this is basically what we call Virtuosa's uh, land challenge, land gaming challenge. Okay. Um, and so, like I said, this has been going on for about five years now, and uh, we are having it in uh, January of 2018 as well. Right. So this is the first time you are going like uh, out of your company and get people into join into this competition, right? Um, so we've involved university students for a while now, okay. but this is the uh, when we're going to uh, try and expand because uh, this time we're playing a game that is known to everyone, uh, basically Call of Duty for Modern right. Warfare. Okay. So we get a lot of gamers in Sri Lanka who are interested in this. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier we used to play a different game. So now since we are going into this game where more people get in, can get involved, we're uh, going to expand a bit more. 
Uh, yeah. So, uh, how's the response to this? I mean, you have uh, contacted everyone from universities, right? Yes. So, uh, how is the response from there? The response has been uh, really good. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we have a large number of teams already signed up from the universities. Okay. Uh, so, what we're going to do is we're going to have a university organizer from each of these universities who works on getting the teams together and submitting their names and everything to us. So, we'll bring them in on a couple of days, uh, third week of January, and uh, we'll get them to play against each other, choose the quarter finalists, okay. semi finalists, and of course, go on to the finals where they'll play alongside uh, the finalists from Virtusa. Okay, so you're going to have a different competition in your end and uh, choose a winner from there yeah. and compete with the university um, team, No, huh? it, those are two separate tracks. Okay. The university, uh, so we'll have a university champion and a Virtusa champion. Okay. And we'll, uh, we generally we have a friendly match between the university winners and the Virtusa winners, but that's just okay. a friendly match. Okay. Generally. Uh, I think it's very cool to have uh, tournaments like this even from your place, right? Uh, breaking away from day-to-day -day work can do this. Um, do you think it will help uh, the students and as well as your co-workers? Yes, definitely. So, um, uh, Virtusa is a company that has 86% uh, millennials, so that's young adults working at Virtusa. Mm -hmm. um, so we believe that through, uh, especially the special interest group at Virtusa and all of the people who are involved in organizing this, we believe that um, gaming actually as a team sport, yeah. it actually inculcates a team spirit and leadership qualities in within our um, employees, which is a great thing and quite needed in the IT industry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, uh, this tournament, uh, are you going to have it like annually or what's the plan there? Yes, it has been an annual tournament so far and uh, so this is the time we are doing it at this scale. So we'll only be, uh, we'll only be expanding in future years and we'll have it annually, definitely. Right. Uh, so Ramadha, last year, how did the event uh, went? Um, so uh, the virtual level was as usual. So we had uh, some great players take part as well as... Uh, Interestingly enough, the uh, university tournament was won by the team from the University of Jaffna. Oh, very so, uh, they were actually beating the University of Sabragama, which is the team that's been winning in general. So, mm -hmm. it was a huge uh, like a overhaul of the whole uh, competition. So, the important thing to mention here is that we have universities from all over the country, both private and uh, government universities. So, mm -hmm. we had a lot of teams, but still... Uh, this, this team from so far away who traveled so long to get to virtues and to participate in this competition, they won overall. So that was a great thing for us. Yeah. So uh, uh, to wrap this up, do you have anything more to add? Yes, so uh, to university students that are interested in participating in Land Challenge 2018 at Virtusa, uh, I invite you to reach out to us. Um, you can register yourself as a team to participate and uh, there are quite a few uh, prizes offered as well and uh, we hope to see you all there. Thank all right. you. Thank you very much for joining Ramindu. Uh, we'll see you in a bit. Thanks. Welcome back. So that was a pretty interesting interview, Thilna. Yeah. You're going to participate. Oh, you're not from university. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too old for that. No? Yeah, too old for that. <laughs> uh, having kids uh, not allowed to be on a computer for a long time, it's a... Uh, well, a lot of fathers does it, right? I mean, I've I seen mean, I, I haven't given up on gaming. <laughs> so. <laughs> so Apple has had a bad week. Well, uh, I think we spoke about this before as well, right? Yeah. Hmm. So... Uh, it's been a rough ride for them uh, recently, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, everyone is trying to blame uh, it on them, but I think they can do a lot better. Uh, uh, for I some reason, they're failing. Apple, um, so, for the, I mean, for example, I'll give you some example, right? Every time an iPhone update comes out with a major release, right? Yeah. They always screw it up. Yeah. There's and, a battery and, life issue. 
no i didn't think you I mean, still have the of, calculator issue right yeah a lot of people are waiting for one point i mean point one release yeah. other than installing the yeah zero release correct so, that's what a lot of people do right yeah. <laughs> and they are apple is worse when it comes to compatibility as well right yeah. so backward compatibility is not even in their vocabulary right mm. they put updates out they'll break 10 different software yeah and uh, if you have an pretty i mean old phone then it will like lag yeah so they, they they want you to upgrade uh, they uh, force you to like they force buy you to basically <laughs> buy new <laughs> yeah. so that's one of the reason why apple software has been somewhat of a stable then compared with windows because windows whole thing is enterprise right yeah so in enterprise it's not like you can say hey buy the new version and get rid of a million dollar worth software right yeah. so for example i'll tell you um so windows xp has been uh, expired for a very long time when i say expired they have they don't support it anymore right but remember with the last uh, virus attack a lot of health organization was running windows xp and yeah. a lot of atms are still running on windows xp there were so many vulnerable devices yeah this is because um, so microsoft has separate agreement with those uh, uh, entities where they pr- still provide updates and patches right okay. um, so why microsoft is um, is more cumbersome when it comes to software they always now let's take i'll give an example if you take mario mm-hmm. super mario yeah. that released for dos the first ever release mm. if you get a windows 10 computer if you double click on that exe it will run mm. but if you take mac <laughs> you take the very first release of mario on mac <laughs> you take it on a new mac and if you double click on that that's not going to run so that's the difference right so when you try to incorporate all these features and systems into a system hmm. uh, it's not going to be stable right it's yeah. they're, they're bound to be because more mo- i mean we all we talk about right more moving parts in a machine less likely to break right yeah. so that's that's whole thing about software as well more so that's why apple is doing this Apple don't want to have to support a lot of devices. Yeah. They try try to push you out of it. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't work, this doesn't work. Now I have a iPad 1 which is basically garbage, right? Yeah. Can't do anything on it. Mm-hmm. Doesn't I mean like it's just, it doesn't even you can't even browse. Yeah. So that's the issue with Apple. But having said that with all this restriction they put, right? and then uh, the flexibility they have with these kind of things like say hey but they really screwed up on the updates yeah so what happened was this time uh, uh, anyone could log in with root access uh, so without root any is cost. the super use access mm-hmm. it's beyond administrator yeah. right yeah so it's basically you have to just click few times and it just let you log in yeah and they managed to like fix it up uh, within uh, a day or two but from uh, next update it got rolled back roll because back. they did the software update without having a versioning number yeah so the next update actually <laughs> rolled back their previous update <laughs> and uh, last week i think uh, the uh, programming uh, sorry ide xcode uh, you couldn't commit uh, changes to uh, apple i store uh, yeah so last the, week. so uh, xcode is basically what you used to develop ios application yeah and other stuff but basically everyone use it just because they added to ios application yeah. and what did they do till <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, if you like try to uh, push some changes on your app then it will show a version incompatible error message on that that also there and uh, in ios phone you still have the calculator bug sometimes if you don't update yeah. uh, and uh, did apple fanboys clap onto this <laughs> <laughs> that's what i like about apple events i mean if you see in apple event everyone is so energetic even if someone fall down the stage they will still you know <laughs> clap and cheer for it <laughs> that's good and also they had a daytime saving time uh, bug mm. on the ios apps so they don't too. want you to save their data yeah <laughs> so um Apple jokes aside, so Microsoft now embraces Linux a lot, right? Mm-hmm. So Microsoft now, uh, so even if you have a Windows computer right now, Windows 10 computer, nothing else, yeah. you can simply have the Linux core installed onto the Windows computer. Yeah, they call it a Linux subsystem. But why? 
mean, that's a, I mean, I know they'll use it, right? Yeah, if you are a developer, I think it's pretty useful. No, I understand that the Linux subsystem, Linux itself is useful for a developer, right? Yeah. Uh, but why don't you just forget Windows and in- install Linux onto it? So, only thing I can think of for Telina is so you can game on the Windows part sure. of it uh-huh. and then use the Linux part to develop. Mm-hmm. But doesn't it use a lot of hard drive space? Uh, yeah, it uses hard drive space, but... How much? Uh, I'm not sure about space. I tried it 6 GB, I think. I mean, uh, I have a, I have two hard disks, so SSD and a regular hard So, disk. that's the question again. Now, hard drive space is again, we are at a point where it's limited. Yeah, I mean, uh, so in this fresh fresh install uh, with Windows 10 and the subsystem install, uh, 250 GB filled up pretty fast. <laughs> so, I had to buy a regular hard disk. I was not planning to buy a regular hard disk at first, but... I so, had the problem with my computer, I only have 128. Yeah. So, it's... I mean, again, I mean, this is this is funny, right? So I've been read, uh, watching this um, videos on YouTube, and he was talking about uh, larger the SSD, the faster it is. Mm-hmm. So that's another thing. So I mean, if you're buying a 128 and a 256, even though the same model, same drive, yeah. the 256 will be faster than the 128. Okay. A proven fact. Hmm. So, think about it when you're buying that next SSD, so that's a bump up. So, especially if you have the PCIe type hard drives, right, M.2, something like that, not, not SATA itself. Yeah. I so mean, uh, having the Linux subsystem on Windows 10 right now is, I mean, a bit cumbersome because you have to like go to a special channel uh, uh, and you have to download all the updates on that channel. So, why don't you dual boot? Yeah. Or just have a virtual machine? Yeah. 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 If you have a lot of RAM, I think it's yeah. easy. 8 GB is standard, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's all the time we have for today. Um, see you next week. Uh, thank you.